In this video, I want to talk about the use of conjunction elimination. Conjunction elimination says that from a conjunction P wedge Q, where P is any formula in the language of propositional logic, and Q is also any formula in the language of propositional logic, we can derive either one of the conjuncts. So we from P and Q, we can derive P, and also from P and Q, we can derive Q. To represent this a little bit more compactly, we can say P wedge Q entails P, as well as P wedge Q entails Q. Conjunction elimination essentially states that from a conjunction, we can derive either one of the con conjuncts, whichever conjunct that we want, on a new line of the proof. This rule corresponds to how we reason in everyday life. So let's say we have the statement that Sally is a doctor and a woman. So we, here we have a sort of and statement that says Sally is a doctor, and the other part says that Sally is a woman. So we can kind of express this with a little picture here. Here is Sally. We are going to say that she is a woman. So I'm just going to kind of put a bunch of hair on her right here. And she is a doctor. So let's write that with MD. Now conjunction elimination states that if this sentence is true, Sally is a doctor and a woman, then we can reason on a new line. That is, we can derive a different sentence which consists of one of the parts of the conjunction. So from Sally is a doctor and a woman, we can reason to that Sally is a doctor. So we could say that from this sentence right here, Sally is a doctor and a woman, we can state that it follows, so it follows, that she is a doctor. In addition, we can say that from this sentence, Sally is a doctor and a woman, we can also say that it follows that. So we can say that from this complex sentence right here, not only does it follow that she's a doctor, but we can also say that it follows that she is a woman. So the idea is that from the complex sentence, we can reason to either one of the conjuncts. The point generalizes in that for any kind of sentence that we have in English, let's say I say that uh, I am a millionaire, and let's say I'm also a nice guy, and let's say that, I don't know, I love trees, you know, so we have this kind of tree right here. From this complex sentence that is a conjunction, where it's a number of smaller sentences linked together with the use of and, we can reason to e any of the conjuncts. So we'd say that from this complex sentence, it would follow from this whole thing right here, so this whole complex sentence, we can reason to a simpler sentence. So from this whole complex thing, we can say that it follows that I am a millionaire. In addition, it also follows that I could reason to that I am a nice guy. And it also would follow that from this whole complex sentence here, it would follow that I like trees or like nature. So this is a sort of simpler sentence that conjunction elimination allows us to reason to. So let's look at a particular example of conjunction elimination in a proof. So let's say we have a entailment, which is P and Z and Q entail Z. And so we want to provide the derivation or proof of this. So we start by setting up the proof we simply write down the formula that is to the left of the turnstile. That is, we write down this P and Z and Q, and we kind of plop it down right there and indicate it that it's a premise. Now the goal of this whole proof, the goal will be to, at some point in the proof, get Z. Now, conjunction elimination says that from a conjunction, we can derive either one of the conjuncts. So you'll see that at line one, what we have is a conjunction, P and Z, and Q. 
So conjunction elimination says that we can reason to either Q or we can reason to P and Z. So since the goal of this proof is to drive Z, we are going to use conjunction elimination. We'll abbreviate that we're using this rule by the sign for conjunction at E and simply write P and Z at line two. Now remember that the goal of this proof is to drive Z and so since we have P and Z at line two and conjunction elimination says that we can drive a either one of the conjuncts from the conjunction, we'll simply write Z at line three and we're using conjunction elimination. But this time we're using this second formula right here. We're using this conjunction where there's a P on the left hand side and Z on the right hand side. And so we can use conjunction elimination to derive Z.